Dear students, I'm Sir Steven. Welcome to our YouTube classroom lesson. I hope you are doing great today. In the previous lesson, we learned that morphine is the smallest grammatical unit, which goes up to be a constituent of a word, then up a step further, a constituent of the phrase, then a phrase becoming a constituent of the clause, and finally, Clause is a constituent of a sentence, which is the highest or the biggest grammatical unit. We also recall that apart from the bottom up view, we have the top down view or the focus gradually moves from the sentence, which consists of a clause down beneath it and then a clause points down to consist of a phrase. The phrase down was to consist of the word, and the word points down to consist of a morphine. By the time we have come through the session for today, each one of you will be expected, yes, to be able to demonstrate knowledge of the concept of morphine. Do you explain what a morphine? Identify the criteria a morphine meets, then give examples of morphemes. You will also be able to demonstrate understanding in identifying the types of morphine. List all the types of morphemes. Discuss how each type of morphine functions to form words. Give workable examples of each type of morphine. Demonstrate application of knowledge and understanding in identifying morphemes in sentences and categorize them into words. I wish you a happy lesson. The core competencies to be developed are digital literacy, personal development, and communication skills. All right, can we now take our phones to search for the meaning of more things? I believe you did that. Now pay attention as I take you through this section. If you don't understand anything, let me know. I'm always here for you. Now, what is a morphine? A morpheme is the smallest meaningful grammatical unit in a language. It consists of linguistic elements that cannot be broken into further units. A morpheme is the smallest meaningful grammatical unit in a language. It consists of linguistic elements that cannot be broken into further units. Now let us look at this example. In English, the word stop cannot be broken into further units. So it's a morpheme. In the same way, the following can be considered morphemes cat, cat, et, work, if, and to, table, ester. Types of morphemes. Basically, there are two types of morphemes. These are free morphemes and bound morphemes. Now let us look at the meaning of these basic types of morphemes. We will start from free morphine. A free morphine is a kind of morphine which can stand on its own. This means that this kind of morphine makes sense on its own. They can stand alone, then they make sense on their own. Let's look at bound morphine, which on the other hand is the kind of morphine 
which cannot stand on its own. That is, a bound morphine gets its meaning when it is attached to a free morphine. Now let us look at this example. The word teacher has two morphemes, the teach and the er. That is the er. Well, teach is the free morphine because it can stand on its own and make a complete meaning. The er, that is the er. It's a bound morphine because it cannot stand on its own. And it can only make sense when it is attached to the free morphine to make it a teacher. Let us look at additional examples of free and bound morphemes. Let us take a word such as works. We have works here. Work is a free morphine whilst the S is a bound morphine. Impossible. The free morphine in this word is possible. Pals, the MRM becomes the bound morphine. Comes. Come becomes a morphine. That is a free morphine. Pals, the S becomes bound morphine. Can we continue from here? Now take your notebooks, write any 10 words that comes into your mind and identify the number of morphemes in each word. Take your notebooks, write any 10 words, any 10 words that comes into your mind. You're gonna identify the number of morphemes in each word. So as you did the other time, send your answers to me through my whatsapp number 055 sorry this time it is 0547 888872 so 0547888872 so the question is now on the board remember you are just writing any 10 words that would come into your mind right now and I guess you have to take simple words before we move to complex so that you understand it so much and very well. So I'm waiting for your answers. Remember, whoever does it right shall be rewarded, as I do always. Clap for yourselves. All of you have really done well I set few mistakes from few of you, but I know you can do better. Let us now do the identification of the number of morphemes in a word together. Let's use the words you use for your exercise. So we are now coming to identify the number of morphemes in a given word. Whenever you see a word, you must be able to identify the morphemes in it. For instance, in English, the word stopped is composed of two morphemes, stop and a past tense maker. That is stopped. So the ED that makes it past tense is the bound morphine whilst the stop is the free morphine. So in the same vein, the word walked, you can identify it by yourself. Walk plus the past tense maker, walked. From the discussion, we can confidently say that verbs in the past tense have two morphemes. So whatever you see a verb in the past tense form, it has two morphemes. Any questions so far? If you don't understand anything, let me know. Someone is sending a question. Yes, it's Amina. Amina is asking a beautiful question. Let's help her out. This is her question. Sir, please, what is the difference between a morpheme and a word? 
she wants to know a morphem in a way. Can any one of you help her out? Can you try? Anyone at all? All right, now listen to the difference. The difference between the morphem and the word is that sometimes morphem does not stand alone, but a word does by definition. A word may be a morphem, but a morphem may not be a word. Now, I believe you know the difference between a word and a morphine. A word may be a morphine, but a morphine may not be a word. Let us now try our hands on this. We know free and bound morphemes already. So, let's try to identify the number of morphemes in the following sentences. That, if you do, would make me proud. For example, the boy is here. There are four morphemes in the sentence above. That is the boy is and the here. They all carry one morphemes. So in all, in this sentence, we have four morphemes. There is one, boy is one. This is one, here is one. Which makes it up four morphemes in that sentence. So, answer this by yourself. He passed away last week. He goes to school every day. The man is coming. He is the black sheep of the family. God loves you. He quickly ran to the house. These men are foreigners. He passed away last week he goes to school every day the man is here he is the black sheep of the family god loves you he quickly ran to the house these men are foreigners if you are able to do this then i must reward you and i know you will do because you have passed through a lot and have learned a lot. Through this morphemes, the free and the bound morphemes, I would always reward you for being a great answer to a question. So I'm waiting for the answers on my WhatsApp line. Then we shall continue from there.
I will reward you all for doing a great work. Shall we continue? Now let us look at the types of free morphemes. Free morphemes can be classified as lexical morpheme and functional or grammatical morphemes. It's two types, lexical and functional. Lexical morphemes are morphemes that can carry meaning on their own. They carry dictionary meaning. They belong to the major or open word class such as nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs. I was told you've done that. Uh, sit, go, man, come, happy, slowly, teach, dog, farm. Functional or grammatical morphemes. They only play grammatical functions. Such morphemes belong to the minor or close or functional word classes, such as preposition, conjunction, determinants, and pronouns. Examples of such words are de, a, an, and, or, me, while, in, but, etc. Even because it's part. Now, let us look at the difference between the lexical morpheme and grammatical morphemes. Lexical morphemes make meaning even when they are not used in context. But grammatical morphemes get their full meaning only when they are used in context. That is one. Some examples of lexical morphemes are table, car, go, dance. Some examples of grammatical morphemes are the because of in. Let us look at this example. The man is in the car. In is more meaningful in a sentence than when it is in isolation. So the man is in a car. Lexical morphemes belong to the major word class, whilst grammatical morphemes belong to the minor word class. So know the difference. Now I hope you can differentiate between lexical morpheme and functional morpheme. Let us look at the types of bound morphemes. There are two types of bound morphemes. These are inflational morphemes and a derivational morpheme. Inflational morphemes. This is a morpheme that is added to the stem but does not change the part of speech or the word class of a given word. For example, boy is a noun. If you add S, it is boys. And it is so a noun, maintaining the word class. Eat, if you add ing, eating, it is so verb at both sides. Easy, it's an adjective. If you add e or i e s t, easiest or easier, it is so an adjective. That is inflational morpheme. Now let's look at derivational morpheme. A derivation of morpheme is a morpheme that is added to a base morpheme to change its parts of speech or its word class. So you know the difference. One maintains the word class, one it is changed. But this one, there are prefaces, affixation here. So let's look at the difference between a preface and a surface. I'm sure you know. Write your answer down. A preface is a morpheme that is added before a base word to form another word. U, N, on, im, a, etc. A surface, on the other hand, are morphemes that are added after a base word to form another word. Li, is, for, and the air.
examples of derivational morphemes. So now let's look at the difference through these examples. The boy, as we used there, was a noun. But now when we add ish, it becomes boyish. And now it is an adjective. Hope and noun. If we add F U R, it becomes hopeful. And now it is an adjective. Teacher, a verb. If you add E R, it becomes teacher. And now it is a noun. So the word class has now changed. That is the difference between the derivational morpheme and the inflational morpheme. That is how it is. So look at these words on the board. Stable, adjective. Now when we added derivational morpheme, it has changed the state of the word class from adjective to a noun. Provide to a noun provision. Quick to an adverb. Quickly. For the examples given, we realize that the addition of the morphemes changes the word classes of the given words, even though their forms have changed. For example, the addition of H to boy to become boys changes the word class from noun to adjective. So this differentiates between the inflational morpheme and derivational morpheme. You have to note this so that wherever you meet it, you can answer that question by yourself. We would end here and continue by next week. I would communicate to you on the day we will meet for our next lesson. Have a nice day.